Praise the Lord, everybody. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, let's stand to our feet. Begin to magnify Him and thank Him for everything that He's blessed us with. You've got breath in your lungs. You've got strength in your legs. Let's just stand and magnify Him. Thank you because He is worthy. Come on, lift your voice and praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords in this place today. Excuse me for a minute, but I've got a song to sing. It might not be on key, but it's from my heart. And no one else can tell it what the Lord has done for me. This might take all day, so I better start right now. And it might get
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. There's nothing that can stop your praise. Nothing that can stop your praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo. He's worthy of our praise, Brother Ronnie. There's nothing that can stop your praise this morning. Come on. He's worthy of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to go ahead and take up the offering this morning. We want Heidi to put the ways to give up on the board, if she will. We have Riverbend Pentecostals. We have Giveify. We have PayPal. Cash the check can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477. New Matter, New Matter, Missouri, 63869. Text to give, 833-883-9311. Amen. I believe this prayer works, and I know this prayer works. Right. Amen. If you will say it with me, upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out on me such a blessing. Room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, states and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off. Best to miles in the world you can see. My whole family saved and serving God and perfect health and abundance. Walking into my favorite blessing. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Tithe on the inside, offering on the outside.
Come on, he's in this place. Come on, I said he's in this place and he's moving. Why don't we just begin to lift him up this morning? Why don't somebody give him some high praise and thank him? Come on, you didn't have to feel his presence. You feel him because he's merciful. Because there's mercy in this place today. There's grace in this place today. Brother Tripp, because he endured that cross, despising the shame, and that veil was torn. Pastor, it's because Jesus didn't open his mouth, and he went to that cross and died for us. He died for every one of us. It's because of his blood that we're in this place today. Hallelujah. I love his presence. I love his presence. Um, we're going to go into prayer today. I want to I want to pray a little bit different today. I want to pray a little bit different today. As I was in the prayer room this morning, just out of nowhere, it just came to me. Um, I thought about it a little bit before, but it came back to me. That pastor said, I believe it was on a Wednesday night, um, we're about to go through a purging process. But if we're going to go through that purging process, it's going to be to bring forth more fruit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Um, scriptures began to come to my mind. I went into the book of Hebrews, and I found myself in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11, and it says, My son, you know, you're baptized in Jesus' name. You, you put on the name of Jesus. You, you are filled with His Spirit. And you need to claim that today. We're not weak. The church is not weak right now. You are a son of God. But it says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of His correction. We're not abandoned. When we go through the tough times, He does not abandon us. That, that is a lie from hell. He is with us. And Brother Terrence, He doesn't leave us. He don't forsake us. For whom the Lord loveth, He correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom He delighteth. He loves us. Pastors talked about it, but we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. It taught, but God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Much more than being justified by His blood, we shall be saved by wrath. He loves us and we're covered in His blood. But what I really want to pray for today, I've been filling in the prayer room. I don't want to pray for all the problems to go away. Brother John, if He wants to do something in my life, I'm not praying for the problem to go away. I'm not praying for the trial to go away. I'm praying that His presence will bring me through that and accomplish what He wants to in my life, what He wants to in the church. So what I want to do is we pray this morning. If everybody would lift their hands this morning as we pray, I want to pray, I want to pray that pastor's word will go forth and accomplish what it needs to, that he will speak under divine authority, that God will speak through him, and that there will be a word to carry us through, that, that we can respond in faith, that we leave this place changed. It's not going to be because of a snap of a finger. It's not because our God is magic. But we respond in faith. So let's pray this morning. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, I am grateful for your presence. It's only because of your mercy that we're here. It's because of your mercy that we're breathing. It's because of your mercy we can lift our hands and we just lift you up. But God, I pray over our pastor this morning. I pray that you anoint him. God, I pray that you speak a divine word through him that brings direction, that brings guidance, that brings understanding. Lord, and if we don't understand it, that's okay. But God, I pray that you bring comfort in this place, that you let somebody know that you are with them, that you not have not abandoned them, but Lord, you have a purpose for their life and that they're going to come out of this winning souls. They're going to come out of this with fruit. They're going to come out of this with love and the world's going to know us because of that fruit. That love, joy, peace. Lord, let us be peacemakers. Those are the sons of God. God, I pray that we find peace in our homes. I pray that we find peace in our jobs. 
But God, you have a purpose for us. We need you today, God. We cry out because we need you. We surrender to you, God. If we're going to do anything, if we're going to be like you, it's only going to be because of you. It's It's going to be because of your spirit, God. And we hunger for you, Lord. We hunger for your presence in this place. Bring it down today, God. Oh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. You will provide the fire. And I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide your spirit. 
need your spirit within me. I can't make it without it. I can't make it without the Holy Ghost. I need the spirit of God moving in me. It changes me. It heals me. It delivers me. It frees me. It encourages me. I need the spirit active. Fill me up till I overflow. If we would let that happen in this house right now, there wouldn't be a person sitting still. There wouldn't be a person sitting dead. There wouldn't be a person afraid. Fill me up till I overflow. Oh, I want to roll over. I want to roll over. I want to roll over. He that believeth only as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Don't you let it flow. Let it flow in the house today. survive if you step out of your seat. You will survive if you lift your hands. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be hesitant. Don't be obstinate. Don't be stubborn. Acknowledge him. That's all you're doing. Lord, I want you to know I know you're here. I know your presence is here. I want you to know, Lord, that I'm aware of you in the room. I just like to know what has the devil told you that you believe? I ain't talking to all these folks up here. You don't have to act a fool. But let me tell you something. Up here, there's something different. You don't have to act a fool. Matter of fact, I've challenged folks. Just come stand up in there among everybody. There is a purging, Brother Blake. Don't get scared of what I'm about to say. I want the Lord to know I'm worth keeping around. That doesn't mean I got it all together. That doesn't mean I'm perfect, but it means I want to be. It means I want to have it all together. If you have your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'd like for you to stand and honor the reading of the word if you're able. Your Bibles, your phone, your iPad, your device, or maybe an actual Bible. Thank you for coming to Sunday morning at the River Bend Pentecostals. It's Pentecost Sunday today. Amen. That means on this day, 29 A.D., for the first time the baptism of the Holy Ghost was poured out. First 
on 120, about 120 in the upper room. Then about 3,000 the same day. A few days later, about 5,000. And it's still being poured out. If you've never repented of your sins, been baptized in Jesus' name in water, and been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, you can do it. Amen. While I'm preaching, Amen. while we're praying over the word, it's for you. It's not, it's not optional, it's essential. I said it's essential. Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of heaven. The reason is you're not strong enough by yourself to overcome this messed up flesh that we live in. But there's a reason why. He referred to the infilling of the Spirit as Christ in you, the hope of glory. Sin kept you away from the glory of God. The Holy Ghost brings you into the glory of God and connects you. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. I feel like everybody ought to turn to one another right now and say, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't really mean for you to do that. <laughs> it means you know I didn't come with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Paul said, I didn't come. Brother David, he could have. He was sharp as a tack. He was a member of the elite. He studied at the feet of Gamaliel. Not everybody did that. He was a member of the Sanhedrin court. He was a leader in the religious world. But he said, when I came to you, I didn't come with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save or accept Jesus Christ and him crucified. I read this morning, maybe yesterday, Paul didn't come preaching about the miracles. He didn't come preaching about the loaves and the fishes. He didn't come preaching about Lazarus coming out of the grave. But he came preaching Jesus and him crucified. Duh. I want to preach to you for a few moments today. When the cross preaches... When the cross preaches, you are not here for any other reason except Jesus died on the cross for you. Without that, you had no access. You had no hope. You would not feel the presence of the Lord today if he hadn't died on the cross. And you feel the presence of the Lord today. And it's not only time, but it's high time we start acting like it. I love that song they started out with, and I feel the resistance to it because somebody decided it's just too loud. If the Lord had done for you what he'd done for me, you got no choice but to get loud. The psalmist said, praise him and make a loud noise. The Bible said they praised him with a loud voice because, oh, Brother David, let me tell you something. I'm going to let you be seated. Don't get seated yet, but I will. Barnabas, oh, I thought about it a while ago. They said it might get loud. You know what? Barnabas got loud before the miracle. But it was with his voice that it got the attention of God. What do you reckon would happen in this place if you had to lift your voice to get the attention of God? We are people that praises the Lord. We do it animatedly, vociferously. We do it boldly. We do it powerfully. And yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, we do it loudly.
There's going to be some things happen in this room that's going to unloose the loudness in you, to wake up the loudness in you. Be ready. Be ready. When that woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus' garment, the Bible said Jesus stopped and looked around in a crowd. But when she saw she was not hid, how do you reckon she stood out in a crowd? Twelve years of struggling. Twelve years of being ostracized. Twelve years of being told you're no good and you're unclean and you're nasty and you can't be around nobody was gone in an instant. Brother David, they couldn't keep her quiet. They couldn't keep her down. They couldn't make her shut up. She stood out in the crowd. And when she saw she was not hid, she came and fell down at the feet of Jesus. The cross is going to preach in this room today. Will you hear the words of Calvary in this room? God, we love you. You've been so good in this place today, so powerful, so beautiful, so rich. God, I'm so thankful to be in the presence of the most holy God. I'm so thankful that the, the privilege of operating and living and functioning in the holy of holies is available to everybody in the entire world that the price you paid on Calvary was to, enough to wash away the sins of the entire world. I'm thankful, God, that, that that one sacrifice, that one sacrifice that hung suspended between heaven and the earth didn't even look like a man anymore, but it was God wrapped in the likeness of sinful flesh, and that flesh took a beating, and it was for me. I'm thankful, God, for that promise, for that hope, that the reality of Calvary come alive in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. A contentious spirit has manifested itself in the Corinthian church. Everybody say the church. church. I'm going to reiterate this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we learn about the life of Jesus Christ and the choosing of his disciples. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are actually Old Testament books, Old Covenant books. Um, the book of Acts, you learn how to get saved. Romans through Revelation, you learn how to stay saved and why you need to be saved. Because the epistles are written to people that are already Holy Ghost filled. Can somebody say amen? amen. That's why we very strongly believe that the plan of salvation is Acts chapter 2 and not Romans chapter 10. Can I get another amen in the house? A contentious spirit has manifested itself in the Corinthian church. Contentiousness has no place in the body of Christ. Contentiousness has no place in the body of Christ. If you're ornery in your spirit, you need to repent and pray through because everybody else ain't messed up. That's right. That's right. It's like I've said before, if you've worked 10 or 12 jobs in your life and you always got laid off in the middle of a hiring spree, there ain't nothing wrong with them jobs. There's something wrong with Y-O-U or M-E. It might be right now that we need to ask God to forgive us because when we walked in here, we said, wonder why she fixed her hair that way. When we walked in here, we said, I saw that dress on the clearance rack last week. Look what she old, oh, poor mouth and self. Uh, we walked in here and we said, I can't believe the temperature's set like that again. We walked in here and said, I can't believe they're singing that song again. If any of those types of things ran through your mind, you need to just stop what you're doing right now and ask the Lord to forgive you for bringing contentiousness to the body. Because ladies and gentlemen, we are a bride that's preparing herself for the coming of the Lord. And we've got to get rid of our idiosyncrasies and our preferences and get rid of our stinking thinking and surrender ourselves to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
The call from Paul, hear me now as I preach to you from the word of God. The call of Paul is that they all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions in the church. This, of course, the very fact that he preaches that there shouldn't be divisions in the church tells us what? There are divisions in the church. If they say there are divisions, there's at least two. But we know from the word of God that there are probably at least four different factions operating in the Corinthian church. But Paul is calling these same people divided people, knuckle-headed people, contentious people, if this sinks in, it's, a, ooh, it's not only time, I said it earlier, but it's high time uh, that we stop thinking that the only sinners the Lord is after is the bad sinners. Uh, I come preaching a message of repentance to the church sinners. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, forgive me. Paul calls them to be perfectly joined together because that's what God intended when he called you to the body. I said that's what God intended when he called you. Somebody that's truly called by God and following the leading of the Spirit will automatically be in alignment with the body. In the same mind, he said, be joined together in the same mind. That's the same way of thinking. That doesn't mean you got to all like sauerkraut and weenies. But that means when you come into the house of God, you better want the same thing. You better be feeling the same thing. If you're not, you better be changing how you feel. You better be pushing the same way. Wonder who's going to get baptized today. Wonder who's going to get filled with the Holy Ghost today. I wonder who's ready for a miracle today. The Holy Ghost... The Holy Ghost came into this house today to change us from the inside out. We don't need nothing new in the world. We need something new in the church, and that is to hear the message of Calvary again. He said, I want you in the same mind. Y'all ready for this? Josh, I may need you. Where's the, there you are. I may need you to pull that Chicago Bulls stuff up on your phone and just have it ready. Because when I say y'all ready for this, you can just play and bust it out. And lights will start going all over the place. And I'm 23. Most of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. He said, I want you to have the same way of thinking. Well, I think everybody needs to have their own opinion. That doesn't line up with the word of God. There ain't but one way that this thing works, and it's the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, well, the pastor, pastor, nothing. He's, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. We got a little sidetrack. Brother Shannon was laying it, setting it up and laying it down in there this morning, leading us in the right direction. But we got a little bit sidetracked because but this ain't not, there's no reflection on you, but it's a reflection on us. We were teaching a message that talking about Jesus Christ and knowing him in the fullness of who he is. And all we wanted to talk about was us. Uh-oh. That's not an indictment on anybody, but if we're not careful, everything turns into us. I wonder if they're going to sing the song I like. I wonder if I'm going to have the temperature like I like it. I wonder if he's going to preach one of them messages that I like. I'm happy to tell you that I come into the house of God because I want to be what he likes. I want to do what he likes. I want to be what's pleasing to him. And he likes it when wine owes become sober. And he likes it when drug addicts get set free. And he likes it when people that don't have water and don't have good hygiene start taking a bath and getting right and getting holy. The Lord likes it when people's lives are changed. And we can't have anybody here that gets a life change until we have people here that are messed up. Welcome to the Riverbend Hospital. This is not the Riverbend Church. This is not the Cotton Picking Riverbend Country Club. But this is a place where hurt people come. This is a place where messed up people come. This is a place where sinners come. But they don't come here to stay the same. They come here to get healed. And the reason why we have hope of healing 
because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Said I want you to have the same way of thinking. And I want you to have the same judgment. What's that mean? That means a personal opinion, look at there, or judgment formed in an active relationship. The result of direct firsthand knowledge. That means that we better all be thinking, I can't wait to see what God's going to do today. I know he heals, and I know he delivers, and I know he forgives, and I know he cleanses, and he puts the name on you, and I know he fills you with the Spirit. Well, how do you know that? (laughs) Exhibit number one. I was on my way to a devil's hell. I was born in sin and I was shaping in iniquity. I was lost as a goose in a hailstorm. But one day I bowed my knee to the most holy God. I asked him to forgive me of my sins. I went down in that baptistry in the name of Jesus Christ. And when I surrendered to him, I was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and I spoke in other tongues. And then when I messed up, he had patience with me and got me back on the right track. And when I messed up again, he had patience with me and got me back on the right track. And Sister Maria, he ain't never left me. He ain't never abandoned me. He ain't never stopped loving me. I'm about to get too old to preach like a wild man. But I don't have a halo. Oh, I'm not a perfect man. I'm just glad to be a child of God. And when I think about what could have been, what should have been, if he hadn't stepped in, something gets to burning on the inside, and I got to let it out. And it might get loud. That's going to be my anthem. When we are led by the Spirit, Being perfectly joined together is the fruit of it. I said when we're led by the Spirit, do you know there are some people that are in the right just because they're on the opposite side of those that are in the wrong, not because they were seeking after God trying to be righteous in his eyes. You fell into being right just by being contrary. A wrong spirit can never be right. There must come a change, and Jesus is our example. You can be of Paul, you can be of Apollos, you can be of Simon Peter, and you can be of Jesus Christ, and you can still be wrong if your motivation's wrong. Because that's what was happening at Corinth. Some said, I'm of Paul. Some said, I'm of Apollo. Some said, I'm of Peter. And some said, I'm of Christ. And Paul said, y'all are all messed up. He did. I was supposed to have somebody read for me, but I forgot to ask him. Paul further emphasizes, so I'm going to read and comment myself. And y'all can laugh at me when I stop myself. Like y'all do when I stop Brother Austin or I stop Brother Richard or Brother Britton one time even. Paul said... Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. This in no way insinuates that at any time baptism isn't important or essential. But these folks had come to a place where they were getting baptized to join the faction of their choice. They had come to the place that they were getting baptized in order to fit into whatever club they wanted to fit into. And the church has fallen under carnal influences, which most loudly declares that they are definitely not under the influence of the Spirit because you can't have it both ways. Verse 17 continues, Paul says, When I preach, it's not with the wisdom of words 
There ain't no salesmanship going on here. If you understand and believe the power of the cross, I don't have to convince you to believe what I'm saying. There ain't no flowery words. There's not no wisdom that's going to that's gonna make you look good down at the courthouse or down at the city gates or get you on TV or get you lined up with Shapiro or one of them other things. That ain't what I'm preaching. He said, because if I did, if I preached in my own gifting, if I preached in my own ability, if I preached in my own wisdom and my own talent, I would be making the cross of Jesus Christ of none effect. That word literally means, made of none effect, literally means I would be emptying the cross of its power. And the only place that can happen is inside you. Because there is nothing. There is no power, no force, no demon, no human, no angel, etc., that can render the cross powerless. The only place the cross can become powerless is in me when I think my way is better. The only way the cross can become powerless is in me when I feel like the struggles I've been through in my life are enough of a sacrifice that I ought to have a good chance every day now and again. The only time the cross is rendered powerless or emptied of its power is when I don't think I need it anymore. You're going to like this, Brother Shannon. Verse 18. For the preaching. You got that for me? For the preaching. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Ooh, Sister Sheila, I'm going to bring my pointer out here one of these days. I think about it all the time, but I forget when I'm preaching. Look at here. For the preaching. You can't make it up. I promise you can't make this up. I wasn't looking for this. You know what that word preaching is? You know what it comes from in the original Greek? Y'all ready for this? There you go. Logos. And you know what the logos is? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. You know what he was preaching? Nothing but Jesus. Everything is Jesus. Jesus only. Jesus crucified. Jesus buried. Jesus risen and coming again. Brother Christian, he's preaching the entire message and plan of Jesus Christ. For the Word... Of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. I look that word perish up. It literally means to them that are perishing, are on the road to destruction. Y'all wanted me to preach a little tougher, so here it goes, baby. Everybody ain't going to heaven. Everybody's not saved. I wish it wasn't that way. I wish it was just one big group of us getting on the ferry and riding it over. There are some that are on the road to destruction. Some of them go to church. Those that think the cross is foolishness, absurd, folly, they're on the road to destruction. But unto us which are saved, literally, if them that perish means them that are perishing, then what do you think those of us are saved means? those of us that are in the process of being saved. It means that. It is the power of God. Why do you think people don't want to get out and take a chance on the Holy Ghost making you act like a fool? Because they're afraid of what people might say. That's why most of them, when they do act a fool, they do it over there off the TV. True story. 
If all you're thinking about when you get lost in the Holy Ghost is what other people are thinking about, you are lost. They all now, uh, there ain't nobody in this church thinks about that more than me, probably. It scares me to death to wait out there and do something because y'all tough. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. I looked that up. Power, dunamis. You know what it means? The ability of God at work. So you want to know why I worship him, Brother Christian? It's because I'm watching him work. Because I see him in action. Brother David, he's not a God that's just an idol. He's not a God that's in the tomb. The resurrection shows up every service. The power of the resurrection shows up every service. And I watch the power of God at work. The primary difference between those on the path to destruction, and I've been saying it nice, but that's people who's going to hell. And those on the path to salvation, that's heaven. Only two options. People that preach there's some kind of in-between place, they're deceived. At Corinth, baptism has become a show rather than an acknowledgement of the power of the cross. Rather than evidence of their faith in the power of the cross, they're getting baptized so they can get picked on the right team. Mark 16 and 16 says very plainly, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. In chapter 2, Paul reminds them of the attitude and practices that accompanied him when he came to them. I'm going to hurry. My goodness gracious, it ain't even 12 o'clock yet. What y'all talking about? Y'all got people that don't even come to church talking about how long I preach. I got people come up and to me on the street talking about how long I preach. That's been happening for a hot minute and it ain't changed nothing yet. I just preach till the Lord gets ready, till the Lord gets done. I've went over a few times. I've went past him a few times. But he said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, I didn't come with excellency of speech or of wisdom. I didn't come with eloquence or human wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. The testimony of God is the plan that God has that without the preaching of the word, you'll never know it. For I determined, I made up my mind, I made a decision not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I've preached from this countless times. I've read it countless times. I've heard other people preach it countless times. But for the first time ever, men, for the first time ever, I started looking at what the IED meant on crucified. We like to preach, and I don't think we should ever stop, but we like to preach the experience of Calvary, right? We like to talk about him going up the hill and Simon having to help him and them, you know, him carrying the cross and putting him down. We like to talk about all that. But Paul said, I want to talk to you. Man, Holy Ghost, help me for just a minute. Just a minute. I want to talk to you about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, those English scholars among us could tell us that when we say it's crucified, we speak of it in the past tense. The word literally means, in the literal translation, it means having been crucified. The same message of Calvary that we hear, our sins also hear both those that we committed when we were heathens and those we've been committing in the process of salvation. They hear the message of Calvary, of which the sin of which these church folks in Corinth are guilty, which is pride and self-promotion. 
They all say the same thing, which is, I could have come out of this by myself. I could have worked this out by myself. But Calvary preaches to my sins uh, and says, couldn't have done it without me. There ain't no way that you could have done this without the cross. Uh, both the things I do wrong and the things I don't do right. Uh, Calvary preaches to my success. Uh, Calvary preaches to the angels. Calvary preaches to my enemies. And Calvary preaches to the devil. And Calvary preaches to my infirmities. I probably did a horrible job explaining that and bringing it out, but the truth of the matter is whatever you got going on in your life, Jesus has already paid for it. There's not a new cross. There's not any more blood. It's already done. And Brother Blake, he said, I'm coming preaching that Calvary's over with. It's finished. The price has already been paid. Whatever you need, the only thing that stands between you and receiving it is keep believing. Here's what I was going to say in Elements this morning. Let me tell you how God decides to reveal himself to us. You ready? He makes us wait and think he's going to do nothing. And those of us that don't have a true revelation of the price that he paid on Calvary, we'll get impatient and build us a calf. We'll get impatient and try to find us a new wife or try to find us a new husband or try to find us a new job or try to get a new car because we just know that God ain't showed up yet. And the Lord said, if you could wait one more day, worship me one more day in faith. Praise me one more day in faith. Uh, give me one more hallelujah. Give me one more thank you, Jesus. Uh, give me one more shake it off, uh, stamp it down, and step up. Uh, give me one more shake it off, uh, stamp it down, and step up. Because you're coming out, baby. Healing is coming for you. Deliverance is coming for you. Comfort is coming for you. Why? Why? Because it's Already paid for. I want you to know, I, I, I know that you're saying stuff you shouldn't. I know that you're watching stuff you shouldn't. I know you're living lives that you shouldn't. But the Holy Ghost sent me today to tell you, it's already paid for too. People in the church that gossip, he died for you. People in the church that are rebellious, Talk about the pastor. Talk about the pastor's wife. Talk about everybody. He died for you too. Ooh, we, they ought to know better than that. Exactly how's that working out for the rest of us? Huh? You know what? We're in the process of being saved, Brother Shannon. I'm not going back, Brenton. I am not. I'm on my way to heaven. And sometimes I fall down. And sometimes I get knocked all the way down. And sometimes I'm bleeding. And sometimes I'm battered. And sometimes I'm a dummy. But you know what? Calvary is done. It's already done. That's why God is doing something at the River Bend Pentecostals. He's teaching us that there is no sin bigger than the cross. And there is no time you can commit it that Calvary is still not effective. I don't know why that makes us nervous. We really like hellfire and damnation. We really like preaching and telling people, you better straighten up or you're doomed. You're going to hell in a handbasket. But the truth is, Calvary decided our salvation. And Calvary also will decide the end of our salvation. And it ain't happened yet. Oh, I'm on to We want you. We're better because you're here. We're better because you're here. Warts and all. Huh? How many times have I, I had a conversation with a young man one time that was falling into addiction, and every time he fell into addiction, he cut and run. He went and hid. He went around other people. And I told him, now, I'm going to preach to y'all because some of them don't believe this but I'm going to preach to y'all. Coming to church messed up doesn't make you a hypocrite. Amen. Oh, 
okay? And I told him, I don't care how many times you mess up. Don't stop coming to church. I don't care who you've done it with. Don't stop coming to church. Because, Brother David, the only hope we have is in the cross. And I'm happy to tell you that this August group don't determine the efficacy or the power or the timing of the cross. He said, I'm preaching Jesus and him crucified. There's a reason why he lifted his head up and he said, it is finished. Don't stop waiting. Don't stop believing. Don't stop holding on. Calvary's already paid for what you need. The Lord is not going to have to get the angels down in the workshop like Santa Claus or something, coming up with a new plan or coming up with a new idea or coming up with a new pathway. Calvary took care of everything you need. Ah, God help us. Look at here. What does Calvary say? Romans 8, 31 through 39. I'm bringing it home, baby. What shall we say then to these things? What things is that? I don't know. You tell me. What are you struggling with? What's holding you back? What's got you messed up? Huh? Come on. You tell me. Huh? Sometimes it's affliction. Sometimes it's tradition. Sometimes it's fear. Huh? Sometimes it's, I'm just angry. Really? What, what is it? You tell me. What is it the devil uses against you? What is it that the enemy tells you? What is it that you think people are saying about you? What is it that's in the world that's attracts you so much that you can't surrender to the Lord? What is it? You know. You know, and unfortunately in the age of social media, way too many other people know. <laughs> so what shall we say to these things? I'm glad you ask. If God be for us, boom, drop the mic. The first thing the devil will tell you is that your problems are bigger than the blood of Jesus Christ. He'll tell you that your problems are bigger than the cross of Jesus Christ. He'll tell you that God doesn't have an answer for what's going on with you. So what's the message of Calvary say? If God be for us. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Somebody's believing it. Somebody's believing it. Somebody's decided deliverance is more important than getting the jack in the box. Somebody believe that deliverance is more important than making it to the China buffet before somebody else. Somebody figured deliverance is more important than your roast beef in the crock pot. Deliverance is more important than your schedule or your calendar. I really do love you, Paige. I'll just you happen you happen to be in the wrong place at the right time. How do I know? How do I know he's for me? How do you know he's for you? Oh. Because Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's how I know he's for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. This ain't going to kill you. This ain't going to destroy you. This came to make you. This is the hand of God working in your life. You just strap on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, a loins girt about with truth, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit. He spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Everybody say all. That means all. 
how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Look at here. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who will condemn and damn the people that are chosen by God when it's God that justifieth? I am not proven right or wrong in the court of public opinion. Because, Sister Maria, the day they find me right, the other half will find me wrong. But when I stand before the judgment seat of Lord God Almighty, he judged me with fairness, uh, and he judges me with equity, and he judges me with a pure mind and a pure heart. It is God that declares me righteous. That's the book. You see it? Who's going to throw blame at God's elect when it's God who justifies? Who is he that condemneth? That says you're no good, that you're useless, that you have no chance, that you are not habitable, that you are not livable, that you are done. It is Christ that died. You know what happened, Brother Shannon? Brother John, you know what happened when he died? You know what it's called when they pass execution? Condemnation. I deserve to die. I deserve to pay the price for my sin. But he took it on himself, Brother David. My condemnation. It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God. That is anthropomorphic. It is not true. He's standing at the right hand of God. God don't have a hand. God's a spirit. But the power of God is demonstrated in the life of Jesus Christ. And you know what he does now? He stands at the right hand of God who maketh intercession for us. But he doesn't do it with some new evidence. He did it at the cross. And the blood that Jesus shed for me Way, way back on Calvary. It's the blood that gives me strength today. You want to know why? Because Jesus stands in intercession. You know how he can stand in intercession? Because he was subject to everything I've been subject to. He made himself a human being. And he lived life just like we lived it. But he's been crucified, Brother Terrence. It's done. Who maketh intercession for us. Stand with me. Brother Shannon, you know what I'm choosing to call the continual intercession of Jesus Christ? In the face of my difficulties? I am. <laughs> I wrote it down in my notes. <laughs> I am in the middle of your rebellion. I am in the middle of your adultery. I am in the middle of your fornication. I am in the middle of your addiction. Oh, you've done too much. You've pushed too far. I wish nobody ever would have let that get into my head. Because, Connor, then I started thinking every mistake was too much. God was going to write me off. You know why he's not going to write me off, brother? Because he's got his life invested in me. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And with one voice we should all holler. No! Nothing can separate me from the love of God. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. Flesh ain't never going to submit on its own. I got to get it crucified every day. And you know why I can do it? Because he's been crucified. I just point the enemy to the cross. Nay, in all these things we are. You ready for this? More than conquerors. More than conquerors. More than conquerors. 
That means Calvary didn't pay just enough for you to get past what's bothering you, but he paid enough for the next time and the next time and the next time. Oh, here we go. Through him that loved us. How do I know he loved me? Because greater love hath no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. For I am persuaded. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, Brother Eli, there ain't nothing new coming down the road that Calvary ain't already taken care of. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last, my sin I learned, then I trembled at the law I'd spurned, till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Now I've given Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. That's the Logos. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. That's the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Oh, the mighty gulf. That's how far I was from salvation until Calvary. Ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm not the God that's far off, but I'm right here. I'm right here. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I know you're struggling. I wasn't going to tell this. Please don't read anything to it. It's not real. I told the men this morning, and I made them not tell nobody, but I stood right here this morning. I was struggling this morning. I woke up empty. Can anybody relate? Empty. I really, I asked the Lord, Brother Blake, I said, why do I feel dead? It's just empty. I struggled all night long. I couldn't sleep good. I was wore out. I came and I'd start to pray and my mind would go. I think about the chairs that needed to be straightened up and the bathroom that needed to be this or that. And I stood here, right here, staring, just staring. And something spoke to me and said, why don't you just get up and resign today? No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why don't you just quit? Boy, Marcus, it hurt my feelings, man. Because the first thing I thought was, Lord, is that you? Because when you're feeling dead, you don't know the difference between life and death. why when we're vulnerable, Brenton, <laughs> the enemy comes. I started praying. Not much and not very well, I might add. And somewhere over there in that aisle, you better be careful if you get out in that aisle, somewhere over in that aisle, I felt the whoo. And the Lord said, things don't stay the same with you but they always the same with me. Because there's nothing. 
that can render Calvary powerless. There is nothing that can stop that precious flow of blood from Calvary's mountain to your altar. There's some people here today you've been thinking about quitting. I pray for you. I know who you are. I pray for you. I may not know you all, but I know some of you. There's also some of you who think about starting. And I pray for you too. Because the fear of starting and the fear of quitting ain't much different in them. Because it's the same argument. I just can't make it. I can't live up to that. Can we stop saying that? You never could live up to it. And he knew that, Sister Leanne. That's why he came down to my level. Because I couldn't get up to his. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. And I'm really pulling at your heart today because we need you. Some of you have been sitting back doing nothing, growing more and more bitter and angry. And and the, the Lord died for that. We got no problem talking about the mercy of Jesus Christ for the people out there living in the gutter. But somehow we forget about mercy for those sitting on our seats. He's not giving up on you. He's not forgotten you. He's not abandoned you. Your purpose hasn't stopped. Calvary's still good for you. Calvary still works. Praise team is going to sing this song. I heard him singing it this morning, and it fits this message. My wife's incredible like that. Because I was supposed to give it to her. I didn't have nothing to give. But if the Lord has spoke to you today, if you thought if you thought about giving up, if you thought about starting, if you wondered why God hadn't shown up yet, and you've been thinking about seeking it your own way, if anything I've said today is ministered to you, don't walk out these doors until you touch the throne of God. And let him know I'm still here. It's on my paper here, Brother Jeffrey Wayne Arnold. Right there. You know what that says? I'm still here. That's what it says. You know why I'm still here? Because of the cross. He's got too much invested in me. I understand it. I've seen it. I know what it's like. I be hopeless without your goodness. I would be hopeless without your goodness. I would be desperate. I would be desperate without, without your you, love. love. Don't sit back there and do nothing. Don't sit Slave back there and do nothing. The and Don't! If it was it for Push it out of the way. Push it out of the way.
more praise. Being thankful for the blood of Jesus. Come on, is anybody thankful for Calvary? Is anybody thankful that he did bear that cross? That he bared the pain? That he took those nails for you? For me? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I'm reminded of a, which I was reminded earlier of it, but it's crazy how the service just flows through the spirit when God moves. But I, I was reminded of a message, and it goes right along the same message that Brother Larry referenced Wednesday night by Brother Scott Graham. And I don't remember the title to it exactly, but I remember he, po he posed a question. And he said, what happens to the blemished lamb? And his whole deal was, the only lambs that are ready for sacrifice, Brother Terrence, the only ones that they could sacrifice on the altars were the perfect ones. A lamb with no imperfections, no blemishes, perfect. And he said, what happens to the, the imperfect lamb, the one that, that has problems or has discoloration or has broken a, a bone or has had some problems in their life? And he his whole message, Brother Terrence, was that lamb gets to live. And that's foreshadowing of the blood of Jesus when he shed it on Calvary. Because, Brother Larry, the only perfect lamb, the only one that, that was perfect without sin, he died so that we could live. He died so that the blemished lamb, the ones that are messed up, the ones that have a past, the ones that have problems, and, and honestly, the ones that are going to make problems in the future. And I heard Brother Johnny James preach. He said, the Lord not only died for your yesterday, He died for your today. He died for the problems that you're going to make down the road. Amen, Brother David. He knew you was going to mess up. He knew you was going to mess up ten times. But He died for you anyways. It goes beyond anything. Brother Shannon, it's just like the I am. It defies time. It defies anything about time. He was yesterday. He was now. And He will be. He died for your yesterday. He died for your now. And He died for your tomorrow. Amen. That shows you right there the love of God. That He took those nails. That He took that pain for not just the, the mistakes that you've made. But He died for your tomorrow. Amen. There's power in that, Brother Blake. There's an old song. There's power in the blood. Wonderful working powerful we're wonderful wonder working power in the blood amen i don't ever want to forget that there's power in the blood brother gleason and i'm not up here preaching i i thought earlier i said i after this i need to have dad come back up here and hand him the mic just so he can drop it <laughs> amen what a powerful message but i was also reminded there's so much powerful there's so much power in the blood brother gleason also preached the message a lot of them will remember that from naYC one year about the snake. You know, it's crazy that the Lord references the snake. We associate the snake with the devil. And uh, he talked about the, the venom of a snake, Brother Austin, and how it can kill. If a snake bites you, it can kill you. But it's crazy. You know what the antidote to that is? You know what the antidote to the, to the venom of a snake is? It's lamb's blood. Amen. Ain't it crazy how the Lord just uses things, even physical things that we just on here on earth that back up the word of God? Amen. That there's power in the blood of the lamb. There's actually power in that blood of the lamb. And there may be a scientific reason for it, but I know who created science. Amen. I know who created it all. He created science to, to back up his word. Amen. And there's so much power in the blood. Amen. I, I want to live recognizing that power of every day. I don't ever want to forget it because he died for me. He died. Somebody needs to claim that, that he died for you. Amen. We forget so many times that he, you know, we think when we're at our lowest, when we're in the valley, when we're battling things, he died for that. Amen. The trying of our faith worketh patience. How am I going to make it through this? How am I going to make it through the valley? Dad talked about it. You just got to wait on the Lord. Amen. It's crazy how the Lord works. Uh, we got quite a few announcements this week. There'll be no prayer meeting Monday night due to Memorial Day. Secret Sisters drawing is also next Sunday. Church cleaning this week is team number eight, which happens to be me and my family. 
Uh, NAYC is July 26th through the 28th in St. Louis at the Dome. Um, there's going to be more information coming out later about that. Ladies' night will be this Tuesday, May the 30th at 6 p.m. Um, so text, text going to the church text number to sign up. And please sign up by tomorrow. So if you're going to go to that, you got to text that, the church's number by tomorrow. And as always, bring your own drink if you're coming up to that. Um, and that's going to be Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. Junior high camp is also this week, leaving the church at 10 a.m. Tuesday morning. Um, summer day camp is available for children kindergarten through fourth grade. And that's going to be June 19th through July 28th. Amen. What a powerful move in this place today. Amen. We got any birthdays or anniversaries this week? And I forgot my money too. It's my birthday. I forgot to just now. <laughs> Brother Billy, if I sang to myself, I would just hinder the Spirit of God. Nobody show back up. <laughs> Mamaw got me. By faith, I, I'm going to live to be 100, I guess. <laughs> Amen. The best birthdays are in May. <laughs> All right, I'm already standing, but I'm, I'm going to hold that, mo back, that, that mic back here like Cody used to. <laughs> birthdays first. We'll do birthdays first. So everybody, birthdays, stand up. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. Stand up. We'll sing to y'all now. A happy anniversary to you. A happy anniversary to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy anniversary to you. A happy anniversary to you. And the best one you ever had. Amen. Can we all stand in the place today? I should have had Lottie come up here and sing because she loves the birthday song anyways. And she'd sure enough sing it. Brother Terrence, why don't you dismiss us in prayer today? Amen.